Okay, now we'll talk about numerical calculation of derivatives. And remember how we originally calculated an approximate value for a derivative. If we have some function of x, say it's some curve in the plane like this, and we have some x value like this, and we want to find the slope of the curve at this point. So how steep is the curve at that point? Well, what we do is we take a little value over here to the right, and so this distance right here is our change in x. And so this point is x plus delta x, and maybe this is a really small distance, like 0 0.001, a really small increment delta x. And then we take this point here, and we take the slope between those two points. And if this, if this delta x is a really small increment, then the slope between those two points is a good approximation to the slope of the curve at the point we're interested in. And the calculation here is pretty easy. If this is x right here, then this is f of x. And if this is x plus delta x, then this y value is f of x plus delta x. And so the slope is going to be the rise over the run. And so the slope calculation is this. It's f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. And this is what we call a difference quotient. And specifically, this is what we call a forward difference quotient because we've moved to the right. From x here, we've gone to the right of this incremental amount, delta x. We could also use a backward difference quotient. If we had gone back this way, we would have another point on the graph back here, and we'd have a little slope here. And we could also get a fairly accurate estimate uh, going backward along the x-axis. And of course, the smaller the increment, the more accurate it is. Now, instead of going forward or backward, we could also do both. I could go forward just a little bit to this, this position here. I'll call it x plus delta x. And I could go backward to this position here. I'll call that x minus delta x. And so I end up with a point here and a point here. And then if I connect those two points, I get a slope that is a good approximation to the slope at the point I'm interested in right there. And it's arguable that that's a better approximation because you can see the way this curve goes. This curve is concave down. And if I just start from this point and go forward, you can see if I go really far forward, I end up with a slope that is less than the slope at the point here. So going forward, in this case, tends to underestimate my slope. And going backward, you could see if I went really far, I would end up with a slope that is steeper than the slope at this point. So going backward in this case tends to overestimate the slope. And that's often the case. Going one direction will tend to overestimate and one direction will tend to underestimate. And if you go both directions at the same time, those two errors will, will tend to cancel each other out in most cases. And this is called a symmetric difference quotient. We go forward a certain amount and backward a certain amount and we get two corresponding y values to these x values. And we can name these. This is f of x plus delta x and f of x minus delta x. And then the slope calculation would be this. It would simply be the rise over the run. And so the rise would be f of x plus delta x minus f of x minus delta x over 2 delta x. And this is what the calculator does. When you do a numerical approximation to a derivative using the inderiv function on the calculator, and we'll do this in just a second, it does this. It takes, it's, you're, you're going to tell the calculator to calculate the slope of a curve at a particular point. And what it does, it knows how to compute the y values because you've told it this function. And so it just scoots forward a little bit and backward a little bit and computes those corresponding y values, calculates the rise and the run, and gives you your, uh, your quotient there, the rise over the run, as the slope. So here's an example. f of x is equal to x squared we're told to find the slope of function f 
at x equals 1.5. So on the calculator, we're going to type this, n deriv, and then you give it the function. You put in parentheses here the function, then you tell it x and 1.5. And what this means is calculate the derivative numerically. That's what the n stands for. So it's a numerical approximation to the derivative of this function when the variable x equals 1.5. And so what the calculator does, it actually is going to calculate values. x squared, as we know, looks something like this. And it's going to come over here to x equals 1.5. And it's going to go to the right of 1.5, a very tiny amount, 0.001. And I'm exaggerating it in this picture. And it's going to go to the left of 1.5 by 0.001. So it's actually going to be finding these values here, 1.5001 and 1.499 I guess 1.501 and 1.499 and it's going to calculate those y values based on the function we've told it to use and then it will do a rise over run and we'll, that will be an approximation to the slope at this point so let's do it here's the here's the calculator turn this thing on and you hit the you need to hit the math key which is right here and math and option 8 if you go down and you can just press 8 and it says in deriv and there's the open parentheses and it's waiting for three arguments so let's type in the function x squared comma and then x and comma and then 1.5 and hit enter and it tells us it has a slope of 3 right at that point so that's the derivative of the x squared function at x equals 1.5. Okay, here's another example. f of x is x cubed minus 4x squared. Find the slope at x equals 2. And we'll do this on the calculator by typing in deriv x cubed minus 4x squared comma x comma 2. And let's see what we get. So I'll hit math 8 and it says in deriv and then I'm going to type x cubed and I'll just do x to the power of 3 like that x cubed minus 4x squared comma so that's my function and then comma so the derivative of that function when x comma is equal to 2 and I like to hit the close parentheses and then hit enter and look what I get negative 3.9999999 and I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that that really should be negative 4 so my answer here is negative 4 and the reason it didn't say negative 4, the reason it gave me all those decimal places, is because this is really just an approximation. It's not exactly correct. So when you see something like this, it really does make sense to round it to negative 4. Okay, so that's an introduction to the NDeriv function on the calculator. We'll come back in the next video and do some more examples, and I'll show you some different ways to use the NDeriv function on the calculator and some places where it can be particularly useful.